Hi, so we're going to go through some stuff on the batteries again. Now it's a bit tech head, so if it's uh, a bit boring, I understand that, and please do feel free to stop watching. I'm not the least bit upset. Now we've changed our test equipment around a little bit. So we have the KDEX here with its computer to take the results. Then we have the testing station right here where we put the batteries on to test. Uh, and then we've joined up with, uh, with our Rigol so that we can uh, cross-check those results. Now the Rigol measures the voltage of the cell um, across the cell at the cell. It measures the ampage that's being delivered to the motor. The KDEX measures the voltage across the load, that it's, uh, calibrated load that it's giving it in there. So there's a difference between the readings. So the Rigol, if you like, is reading the um, what amps power of the whole mess. The KDEX is fairly internal, so there's always a, a difference between the readings. This actually tends to be slightly higher. This tends to be slightly lower by 0 0.05 volt, uh, and uh, I think 0 0.0... Yes, it's 3 milliamps difference between the two. So there's a bit of a difference because of what we're measuring and where we're measuring it. But it does give us the ability to cross-check and have an idea of where things are going. Now, we've gone through in a previous video how we've been making these, and we've been making these on the sort of uh, next scale up, so that we can test all of that stuff you need to test when you're making a battery, all of the constructional stuff that often gets missed. And as you know, they basically look like this. They're, they're a bit of stainless steel, and they've got a little tab soldered onto them, and the active material goes onto that, and that acts as a current collector. Then we obviously have a separator and a bit of electrolyte on there. All of the uh, stuff varies, but these current collectors are what we're using all of the time. So we have four different types of battery. And people say, why well, have four different types of battery? Surely you just want to make one. But that's because they have got in their head the idea that there is the best. Now, there's no such thing as the best. There's only something that's appropriate for the job that it does. So the first type that we're going to look at is this one here. And this is purely a carbon coating. There's nothing on here but a structured carbon. And you remember we did this when we did the tyre battery. So this is actually the tyre. Now, we make up a couple of um, examples like this, and if we test that, then we find it has more or less, more or less the same energy density as lead-acid battery. And that's super cool, because it costs something like $4 a kilowatt hour to make. So it's got good energy density, not brilliant, good, but it's very, very cheap, and it answers a problem about what to do with all these millions upon millions of car tires we've got kicking around. So that represents a good solution. So it's certainly not something to throw away and ignore and say, hey, it's not brilliant energy density, it's no good for me because it can't power my drone. Well, that's very true, it can't. But it is very cheap, has no intrinsic value. So there's no value to this apart from what the, the energy it stores. And that's significant in some applications. Sometimes you don't want to leave a device like this lying around that's made of a valuable metal because it will disappear for the value of its metal. There's nothing in here but old car tyres. It has no value. It's cheap to produce. So there are certain places and certain applications, something like that is brilliant. It's not the most energy-dense battery in the world, but that's not important when considering when to use a battery like that. Then we have this, which is our sort of mid-range battery. And this is something like $26 a kilowatt hour. It performs quite well. It's in the region of 120, 126 milliwatt, uh, milliwatt hours per gram. That's about lithium ion that kind of energy density from that. So that would make a very good lithium ion replacement. And again, only about $26 a kilowatt hour. Then we have this device, which is our sort of, if you like, our top end device. This operates somewhere in the region of around 300 um, watt hours per gram, uh, milliwatt hours per gram. That's pretty superb because that will um, outshine lithium ion. Then we have this one, which is um, Steve's prototype device. <laughs> this is just awesome, this one. The reason it's so small like this, sorry. <clears throat> the reason it's so small like this is it, it's a very early prototype that Steve's working on. And this has in the region of um, three to 400 watt, uh, milliwatt hours per gram. And that's just super. So we can improve on this one, we know we can. But I'm gonna show you the results of it anyway so you can see where we're heading. And that's the next phase device that we're going to be looking at. And we think that will get to be about 600 or so, something like that. But that's what we're working on at the moment, and that's why that's not as nicely made as all the other ones. So we haven't got that far with it. We're still 
kind of sizing up from the practice scale to the larger scale, but we couldn't resist giving it a go on the KDEX because the KDEX isn't supposed to be able to run something like that because that has um, 0 0.08 of a gram of active material on it for a phenomenally low amount. These ones, incidentally, have about 0.2 of a gram of active material. Same with that, 0.2. This one has 0.1 of a gram of active material. So they're very low active material weights. And what we do with them is charge them up. Now, we can only charge them up to 1.8 volts, and we can only discharge them to uh, 0.4 volts. That limitation is specified by this machine, which, because it's set for specific battery chemistries, limits the voltage window in which we can charge and discharge them. These devices actually charge up to 2.4 volts and discharge down to zero. The lower end from 0.4 to zero is not that important, but the top end, 2.4 to 1.8, that we're missing is as a real shame. But what we've done when we've taken these results, and I've quoted those figures to you, is I've quoted those figures to you based on the KDEX report, and that's really important. It's based on what we can prove that that thing has, rather than what we think it has, because we know it's losing that top end, but we're making no claims to it. We're just claiming what the KDEX can show you it has, rather than what we know it can do. We can do the 2.4 to 1.8 on this thing, which is what gives us a good idea about it, but it's not this thing. This thing is a KDEX calibrated 100% super duper all singing, all dancing machine. It doesn't have a button here that if you put a cup of tea under it, that button will put sugar in your tea. It's got everything. So we're going to go by this everything machine, and that's the result we're going to take. And that's the result that I'm actually telling you about, not a, a result above that I can't prove to the same degree of accuracy as this at the moment, so I'm not making any claims for it. I'm just claiming what the KDEX can show you. Now, if you look at what the graph of the discharge of the KDEX is, it's pretty easy, actually. We connect the device up to the KDEX through the crocodile clips and set the uh, terms of its discharge in here. So this is told that it's got a 150 milliamp hour battery, and it's a discharge at 30 milliamp hours. That tells you it's running at um, C over 5. Yes, that's right. It should take 150 milliamp hour battery five hours to discharge at 30 milliamp hours per hour. So this thinks it's discharging a battery at C over 5. Now, the percentage figures that you can see here, it says capacity and percentage, are read as a percentage of that 150 milliamp hours. So this bit here, before it, when it reaches the 1, that's 1% 1 of the capacity, representing 1.5 milliamp hours that it's actually discharged at a rate of 30 milliamp hours. And as you can see from here, which incidentally is this one, that reached uh, nearly 3%, actually about 7 minutes. And we can see here is the actual load that was applied, which is 30 milliamp hours, and we can see the shape of the graph on its discharge there. And you can see it's relatively capacitive. It's got the, what you'd expect of a capacitive discharge because it is essentially old tyres in a symmetric capacitive uh, relationship, so you'd expect to see that kind of thing. Now, if we close the graph down, we can have a look at the actual data results. Go down to the bottom there. So that ran for uh, 422 uh, seconds. If I normalise that to hours, that is divided by 3,600, that would give me a normalised figure for an hour. I can then multiply that by 30, and that gives me the milliamp hours that I actually got from this piece of material here. And it turns out that in terms of milliamp hours, it was um, 3.5. Now, 3.5 milliamp hours, so that doesn't seem like a lot, but when you consider what it weighs, that is 0.1 of a gram, that means in terms of uh, milliwatt hours per gram, or if you like, watt hours per kilo, it's about 35 watt hours per kilo. Lead acid is about 33 watt hours per kilo. Again, bear in mind, I'm not taking the top end of this. Now, uh, we've done this calculation quite a lot, and it turns out for us and these devices, despite the fact that it dropped down under a volt for part of the time with an above a volt for a part of the time, it's more or less one amp uh, milliamp equals one milliwatt for devices that we're doing. So we've got a really easy conversion to go to milliwatt hours. So we're looking at about 35 milliwatt hours per kilo on the old tyres. And that's what we saw on that graph. And that was obviously quite exciting for us. 
And then if we go to the next one. All right. Okay, so this one we're looking at this device here, and that's actually quite a strange device, and you can see this drop off here, then a kind of long tail off, and then a drop here, and that's actually much more battery-like in its behaviour, and the reason it's like that is because it is in fact a pseudocapacitor. It's an asymmetric capacitor design, it's got tiles on one end, and a different material on the other side, so it's kind of mimicking an asymmetric capacitor. If we go through the math on that, what we get is 126 milliwatt hours per gram, or 126 watt hours per kilo. And that's what that graph's showing you, what those results are showing you. Now if we go to the next one, we see a very interesting behavior in that the battery section, in inverted commas, is extended out here before we get a kind of capacitive fall off and then it tails out again there. And that's this one here that we're looking at. And if we work the math out on that, we actually get round about 258 um, watt hours per kilo from that device. But as I say, we're missing the top, we're missing the bottom, but we'll call it 258 uh, watt hours on that one. Now if we look at Steve's prototype one, This is very interesting, actually. So on his prototype, it drops down to 0.6 of a volt, but look how flat that discharge curve is until it finishes. So the prototype that Steve's working on is, in fact, much more battery-like. Now, we're a bit disappointed by the 0.6 volts, but it was pretty slapped together, and we think that we've got just too high an internal resistance on there because it was supposed to start much higher than that. But this kind of indicates the internal resistance is very high, and we're working on doing something like that, so we think we can shift that entire thing up. But if we take 0.6 of a volt as an average, and that gives us um, round about 300 milliwatt uh, hours per kilo on the prototype, which again, we think we can double at least by uh, solving this issue here to shift that whole curve up. But that's a very nice battery discharge that we've got there. So the KDEX now is reporting to us what these devices are actually doing. And that, if you like, is what's taken quite a lot of the time for us to get around to do. We, these things take hours. As you saw, they're like two and three hours long, each of these tests. So every time we make a mistake and have to do it again, we have uh, just let ourselves in for about four hours of work. And it takes a long time to get all this stuff correct. In order to get the tabbing right, these edges right, the laying up right, all of that stuff has taken test after test after test on this KDEX machine. Now, the KNX machine is important to us because it is a verifiable result of what we're doing. It's a calibrated load from an industry standard machine that we can quite happily state that between 1.8 and 0.4 volts, this device will show 258 watt-hours per kilo, this device will show 126 watt-hours per kilo, and this device will show 35 watt-hours per kilo. And that we can be quite categoric about. And what we need to do now, obviously, is get somebody who's an independent witness in, in to witness what we're doing and sign it off and say, hey, that's what I saw, that was independent, I verified the verification. So they will verify that all we actually did was use this machine to test those results and show you those results are in fact real. What we'd like to do, obviously, is claim that extra bit, so 2.4 to 1.8 that we're missing, because there's a huge amount of energy there, and sooner or later, I suppose, we'll get round to it. But in order to finish this section of it, to show you what we're doing is actually creating batteries that are cheaper and more energy dense than what's already out there. I think we've done that. Our old tires, costing about $4 a kilowatt hour, come in more energy dense than a lead acid battery. Our super duper battery, um, rather uh, mid-range actually, is more energy dense, about two to three times more energy dense than lithium ion. 
are replacement of lithium ion as, as energy dense as lithium ion, but cost about one quarter of the price. So we've gone a long way to showing these results. And we know we've still got a long way to do, but I thought I'd share that with you in case you were interested. I thought you might be. And thank you very much for following and watching.